Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live with our beautiful bicycle with a little basket filled with flowers on it. So I'm super excited about this. And I have a traceable that makes it very fun and easy. So it actually gets improved with the process. I think I freehanded spokes last time. Look at those crazy spokes. <laughs> those aren't gonna get you anywhere. <laughs> but today, <laughs> I actually used, I don't know, I took a lot of time and made really nice spokes this time for y'all. So isn't that wonderful? All right, so what I have here, I've got this all ready to go. So I've got my canvas behind here and we have our traceable. This is what it looks like. So I want y'all to get used to these. We've been so used to using templates. Hello, I'm great, how are you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. And I loved your baseball bats and your ball. I saw it, it was so awesome. Yeah, very, very creative. Keep painting on those. Y'all can paint on anything you have around the house. Just go nuts. I do it all the time. <laughs> that was very creative and never, I've never seen anybody paint on a baseball bat before, so good job. That was awesome. It's hard for me to make a traceable, but you don't need one. You're too good for that. Um, so let me tell you about this. So I have graphite paper here, and then I've got our traceable, and then I have a canvas underneath, but you can use um, just any kind of thick, heavy paper or, or just regular typing paper. Honestly, if that's all you got, you can just use that too. Acrylic paint works on just about anything. So I've got mine on a canvas surface. I want to make sure Feel the edge here, make sure I'm actually on the canvas, and I am. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a colored pencil. Um, I wanna make sure that I can see it. So I've got some colored pencils nearby. Howdy! <laughs> Hi, Larry, what's up? <laughs> All right, so I've got a little bit of, what is this? Like an aqua, it doesn't really matter, y'all can see it, aqua. But this is going to show up really well on my paper. Uh, so I can see what that does is that tells me where I've been. So that's super, super helpful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start making this impression. Oh, one more thing on the graphite paper. Um, I make sure that the dull finish is facing me and then I make sure the shiny finish is facing the canvas. That way I know that the impression is being left on the canvas or whatever surface you're painting on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna go ahead and start Filling in, making this outline. And it's going to leave a really nice light transfer on my canvas, which is awesome. Gives you options that way. So that way, if you want to still have kind of a softer look on your canvas, then you can just leave it as is. Or if you prefer the style that I use, which is more hard lines around every object, then you can use a Sharpie and you can outline everything with a Sharpie. So that's up to you. Gives you some nice options though. I'm gonna give you a little peek. This is so fun, I'm doing this. Hi, Kathy, how are you? See, see, see how it's transferring? That's so exciting. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Larry, I think we see you this week in person for my honey bear's haircuts. You can work your magic on him and Keep him, <laughs> keep working those miracles. Turn him into a handsome dude. Oh, I, I cracked a little funny. <laughs> I beat you to it. <laughs> no, my honey bear's so handsome just as he is. <laughs> I can get away with stuff like that because he never watches Facebook. He's not on Facebook. All right, so we've got our love. Love ha is happening. And then we're going to start doing all of our little roses here. 
Man, this is going to take me some time. <laughs> I normally do this without y'all. And, but then I started realizing y'all need to see how this works. Because there really are a lot of things that sometimes happen in this process. Like, especially with things that go into the foreground and all that, all that jazz. Doing little tiny baby leaves. And then we've got feathers. And here's what I'm really loving about all this is that we always just were able to do in classes without a traceable, we could just only do real basic big shapes. And so with the traceables now, we're able to just do everything, every little detail. Alright, this is my little straw basket. And these are little leaves here. This is like a little branch. Little leaves. And then those roses. Now here's what's going to happen with my roses. I am going to just do the outer side and then a little bit of a reference on the inside. For the most part, I'm gonna leave that undone because I just paint over the top of them anyway. Oh, can't see what you're doing because of the comments. Hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. I'm wondering how, I only thought maybe it was minimizing what I was seeing, but not what y'all are seeing. Darn, I don't know how to fix that. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Can I start painting like this in the air? Um, I wonder if y'all can hide the comments. Is there a Facebook expert out there in the audience? <laughs> Does anybody know how to hide the comments on your end? Oh gosh. I've never actually heard anybody say anything about this before. I knew I couldn't see it, but I didn't know y'all couldn't see it. That is interesting. I'm really not sure what to do about that. That's not very helpful, is it? That's gonna hurt the whole class. Yeah, because I mean, I've got comments up to like top of my hat on my screen, which shows, which basically hides everything. But what's weird is that everybody has always been able to watch me before. I'm running out of, um, what does it say? I turned my phone on side and they're going, yay. <laughs> okay, I'm, glad. I'm so glad you figured it out because I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to figure it out. Okay, that's good to know though. So then in the future, I'll be able to tell everybody else to turn their phone on the side and that'll help. And hi, Mary. <laughs> I'm just seeing your name up there. Welcome. <laughs> and thank you so much. All those little helpful hints I need to know. All right, more parts of the bike here. And that little front, I guess it's called a fender. I'm not really sure on a bike. On a car, it's called a fender. It's probably not on a bike. Hi, Deanna. <laughs> Thank you. Swipe, swipe comments to the right and they will disappear. All right. So those are both very good points. Love that. Thank you, guys. Or thank y'all. Or have you? <laughs> Sorry. My old California girl's coming out on me. See, in California, they don't say y'all, they say guys for everybody. Everybody's a guy out in California. And then I moved to Texas when I was a little girl and it changed to y'all. And I said y'all for everything, except for just then my little California girl slipped out and said guys. It's probably because I was hanging out with my California family this last week. It's 
That's probably why. Oops. My pan over here. And now I live in Oklahoma and, you know, I still say y'all, but it seems like I don't really know what Oklahomans say. I don't, they don't, I guess they say y'all a little bit. Okay, I'm doing spokes now. My hands are kind of all in the way. Sorry about that, but well, there's not much I can do about that. I'm really running out of room. See, here's the deal on this one. The transfer goes right to the line edge at the base. So it can become a little bit challenging to do. And when you're at home, my recommendation would be to turn your canvas to the side, but definitely make sure that it is secured and won't move. I'm not going to move mine right now because that scares me. I feel like it's gonna get off, especially with spokes and stuff like that. Yay, yes, you should. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> and yes, Keisha, you should come. Uh, we have a show this, uh, no wait, August 29th. All right, let's take a little peek. I wanna make sure I've got my bouquet. Let's make sure, let's check my spokes. Ooh, that's awesome. I like that. Okay, I think I've got everything and I see good line work there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift off. All right, so this is really cool. Uh, so we have this as a great start and so keep in mind, if you like a softer look with this, that almost has more of like a, you know how you see watercolors always have a soft look, there's no outlining. There's a lot of acrylic um, painters out there that do that very same look with their acrylics. So either way, both are very beautiful. I tend to do more of a very stylized outline look sometimes. Now, just as soon as I say that, I look back at my model and I go, I didn't, I didn't do that on this one. So. We may just leave it kind of as is, and that would be interesting. I could do something different. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my little colored pencil off to the side. Let's go ahead and talk about tools. So all this stuff comes with our kit, um, but you're welcome to use stuff at home too if you are just a big pro and have all that wonderful stuff. So I've got three brushes that come in our kit here, and then I've got a bucket of water, and then I've got paint. So I've got it all loaded up nearby, ready to go. And of course, normally our paint comes in a beautiful, oh, well, you see it back here. Beautiful box. <laughs> and so mine's kind of a mess, but that's what mine looks like today because I've been using it for a while. Okay, so uh, I hope y'all can see this. I may, you know, I'm gonna do some of this with Sharpie just in case. I don't know. I was gonna try something different, but then that makes me nervous. Cause I never not, I just don't ever not do Sharpie. So let's go ahead and do it so y'all can see it. Cause I'd hate to get to the end of the, I'll tell you what, y'all give me feedback and let me know if y'all can actually see the pencil in your monitor okay. And then that will give me good feedback for next time in case I wanna start and do this differently. And hi Megan, welcome. Okay, so now we're just reinforcing these lines. I wanna make sure that y'all can see it. Plus the lettering would be done with a Sharpie anyway, or black paint. But I, I love a Sharpie just because it's so easy, or a paint pen is super duper awesome. And my little Sharpie's a little, Let's see if I have a better one. I've got a million, oh, that's better, okay. It just seems a little, on the dry side. I might have left it out. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna firm up these lines, fill it in. This black is looking a lot more, well, black instead of darker charcoal gray, which is wonderful, that's what we want. So many times Sharpie can substitute for a paint pen. It's really nice. When paint pens become super wonderful is when you want, you need other colors. That's one thing. 
And they're coming out with all kinds of wonderful products on the market right now for line art and Sharpies and paint pens. And I really need to experiment with them. All right, so I'm gonna do the outline work again, just kind of reinforcing it. These are my roses, so they really just kind of look like little lumpy circles. And then here are my little leaves. I think I just figured out what was wrong with my Sharpie because it's not normally ever a kind of dull feeling, but I think the graphite on the canvas was creating a resist and not receiving the Sharpie very well because I'm noticing that as I'm starting to cover over areas that don't have that thickness of graphite, my Sharpie is picking up speed and having a more opaque finish over the top. So that's very interesting. I'm learning something new as I'm doing this. Got a little feather there. Here's our lovely little straw basket. Handle. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and turn this now that that's a lot easier to do since I'm not having to worry about the shifting of the paper. And y'all can still, I think, see this? Okay, good deal. Oh boy. Lots of lines. Turn it the other way now. And I would do the line work, just try to get on the line as much as you can to keep it more to the interior of the space, of the shape, so that you don't lose the spaces in between. And if you're wondering what I mean, so we have tiny neg amounts of negative space in between the bike parts here. And if I were to do my outline too far on the outside of that line, that would eliminate the negative space. So we need to be careful of that. Hi, Deborah, welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, so now I'm gonna follow this lovely spoke here. And another one. And here's one more. Yay, this is so exciting. We have our trace done. Okay, so that is done. All right, now what we want to do is go ahead and do all of our background first. Hi, Donna, welcome from Texas. I think you know, I think I told you I was in Texas just recently. I hope you are staying well there. So I know that they are, I'm sure everybody's huddled inside somewhere. <laughs> or, or you just said, forget it, I'm sick of this and I'm just gonna go outside anyway. But all my family, I was raised in, well, I mean, I was originally from California, but I moved to Texas when I was about five or six. And so I've, I've lived in Texas for almost my whole life up until recently with Oklahoma. But All right, so I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white. I push this off to the side. I'm trying to make like a, a really nice, what do I want to do here? Up there, up there. Mm, I've got like a light gray up there. I'm going to warm it up with some undertones of some cream too. So I'm going to do like a little pea size amount of some gold and then just a tiny little touch of the black. Tiny touch in there. Yeah. 
So we're going to mix all that together. This will give me a, a nice, mostly light gray, but you can see that little bit of gold in there kind of pushes it to like a little bit of an off-white with those creamy tones happening. And then when the black mixes and it makes those gray tones and it kind of pulls it almost to a super light taupe. Hello, Janessa. Me too, and hi in Ada, Oklahoma. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome. Well, I know. <laughs> We're trying to get all those going again. It's just a little bit of a challenge since we definitely specialized in large events. And so it's one thing to position everybody. I don't know, it's, it's just kind of a little bit challenging. A lot of these event centers, they'll try to open back up and then they'll shut back down and then back and forth, back and forth. So, hello Kendra from El Reno, welcome, welcome. Um, I will tell you that you can always come out and see us in Guthrie, Oklahoma. We are centrally located. We're having a really nice show on August 29th, Saturday. And we'll have some featured paintings that I'll instruct. And then we will have more than 100 designs out. So you can paint pretty much whatever you want when you come to our studio now. And we'll have you do the traceables or the template. So it's really fun that way. I just noticed every time somebody came to our studio, they always wanted to paint something I didn't have out. <laughs> so for the longest time, I didn't know quite how to deal with that. It's very challenging when the paintings are really big, but when you, I don't know, we, we're working with 11 by 14, we can put out, oh, about 100 or so, <laughs> easily. All right, so here we go. We have our base done. This is very exciting. And that's it. I mean, it's just super simple. It's just this nice, light wash of color. Now, I will tell you, if you want to do a little bit of a feeling of some distressed wood coming in over the top, kind of like that uh, shiplap look that they're doing, which is going to continue to be in style for a little while longer because everybody's bought so much of it. Also, because nobody's filming any new shows right now. So we're like, yeah, we're going to live with what we've got. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to dip into a little bit of black. Gives me a nice little hint of a darker color, and then I will lightly position this on the side into that wet paint and just kind of lightly drag that on. Then I'm gonna come back in and make that a little bit lighter. Let's come in with some white now. Just little tiny hints of that. I'm gonna take that just lightly across the canvas all the way across. See, now it's starting to get that look of like old wood coming across there. Now I'm gonna come across from the other side. And I would make sure that there's just not that much paint. You might even wanna drag that on a surface before you go to your canvas. I was a little heavy handed with that dark in the beginning and it almost overpowered my canvas. Now I was able to come back in and correct that with a little bit more white. Um, I would not recommend giving that task to beginners. So what I recommend there is maybe just let it dry brush out a little bit on another surface area first, like a paper towel or something. Then take it to your canvas when you know there's not that much left on the brush and you've got just a light hint of that coming in over the surface. And then you can just kind of lightly drag that across the surface. And that is definitely a time when you appreciate that dry brush look. Hey, thank you. Hi, Bonna, thank you so much. I got this hat in Branson, Missouri. And then I uh, poured paint all over it. <laughs> so that's kind of what I do. <laughs> or splatter, rather, or pour, <laughs> either way. All right, so we have a nice finish happening in the background. And now we're gonna go ahead and start to work in our color blocking over the surface. So we'll do just you know bright 
bold, beautiful color into the solid areas of our iconic shape here, which would be, this is a bicycle underneath here, and the little basket and the flowers, and then the word, of course, and then, of course, you can kind of see where we're going. This is where we're going here. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to mix up a little bit of some turquoise paint. And let's see here. I'm going to use my Little Buddy brush. So Little Buddy is a flat, um, and he's just, he's just a little tiny thing, a little flat brush. But he's going to be perfect for these smaller shapes in here. But I'm going to use him to mix up some turquoise, too. So I've got a dollop of the blue, a dollop of the green, and then a dollop of the white. So about three equal parts, blue, green, and white. And then also, if you are using our paint kit, we've got some really pretty colors in there. Let me show you. We've got some, one of my favorites. I use this a lot. This is the Viridian. So it will go to a really pretty kind of a teal color. So I'm going to push some of that out of there. And I'll add some white to it. So you can see that Viridian there. And a little bit of white will push into that. See, that makes a gorgeous, not quite turquoise. I think it goes a bit more to the teal family, but you can add a little bit of the cyan blue to it to kind of push it to more of a turquoise color. So really pretty option there. Now, fun thing about using Little Buddy, you can hold it like this using the line edge of the brush, or you can hold it on the flat side of the brush where you can get better coverage into the surface area. And that really helps you fill in. At first, I'm going to go ahead and use this to line out the shape of the bike here, and I'm going to go ahead and paint inside the lines. Normally, I'm not too big about just all these rules, but you know what? This is a time when you actually need to paint inside the line so you don't lose the shape of the bike. And look, I just went outside the line like a dork. Oh, I meant to do that. I meant to show you. <laughs> I meant to show you what not to do. There, just come back in with a little bit of that cream and you're all good. Okay, so. All right, so here we go. Line it out and then fill in. See, I got a little bit in a hurry when I went to go fill into the thickest part in the middle. And then I went, whoop, at the line. So, you know, it happens. Easy to fix, though. I wish I lived in Oklahoma. I stayed there for several months in 2007. Wow, that was a long time ago. Uh, and I love when we traveled around that area. And then there, it trails off, and I can't read the rest, but I'll read it later. Yes, it is very, very pretty here. And it's like a best-kept secret. And my understanding is everybody is leaving California in mass exodus. So, it's getting kind of crazy. I, I keep, I hear, I hear from my family and uh, they might start, well, I know my family's coming here. <laughs> so like this is a part of the world where we have trees and lakes and all that stuff. We don't have the ocean. Of course, I have the sounds of the ocean. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a crazy world we live in. but still not really very crazy in Oklahoma. I think we're pretty, I don't know. People are just real happy here. Still have a lot of good stuff going on. It's very pretty here. Lots of stuff to do. And then of course I went to, there are very beautiful places in Texas. And um, that's another place that I've lived a lot of my life, but I went to Lubbock, Texas, and let me just say, it really made me appreciate um, all the scenic views of Oklahoma. Lubbock's really fun, great people there, my family's there. We love Lubbock for that. That's where I went to college, graduated from Texas Tech University. Get your guns up. Well, I didn't do a very good gun, did I, here? There, there's my gun. <laughs> but yes. But wow, it's, it really made me appreciate the beauty of Oklahoma.
Oh, that's my wheel. Oops. <laughs> Easily fixed. I'm, I'm not going to continue painting that though. That is my tire. See, sometimes I get, I keep talking, I lose track of my painting. All right, so I'm doing my line edges around my shapes. And remember, with line edges, you can hold that brush like a pencil. Howdy! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna look that up. Salam. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, that's so that's so exciting. I'm gonna look this up. I'm learning. So when I get done here, I can look that up on Google so that I can know what that means. There's beautiful hearts. I know what that means. From Morocco, beautiful place. Beautiful place. And then thinking about, uh, you should do some Hocus Pocus painted. Yes, I should, that sounds fabulous. That sounds amazing. I'm gonna do a little bit. I've got plants that are gonna come in over the top of this, but I wanna go ahead and do all of this with my color that I know will come in to the shape of the bike just in case and then I'll be coming back in over the top of that. All right, so there's my bike color. I've got that beautiful turquoise. Now what I wanna do is come back in with my tire so I do not forget that that is truly what it is since I went over it, since I almost made a, a teal tire. All right, so I've got my little buddy brush. I just gave little buddy a bath. Let's talk about that for a second. All right, so I take my water bucket here and I push down, I, I do a little bit of pressure so that helps release the paint from the brush. And then if you are working on a flat surface, you don't have to worry too much about getting too much excess water out, if you, especially if you wanna experiment with a little bit more water in your paint. Um, but for anybody who is not wanting to have any kind of a, a watered down look, or if you are working like I am, where your painted surface is at an angle like on an easel, then you always want to go ahead and dry off your brush to the point where it is just moist and there's no excess water in there. So now it is all ready to go and still using my little buddy brush here and I'm gonna go ahead and push into a little bit of that black, just back and forth. Make sure y'all can see that. And then I'll check my edge before I start. So I've got a little line edge there. All right, so line edge. This will come around my little tire. And there's that tire I almost made teal. It'll have a little hints of that in it, but that's okay. That's actually, it might be really pretty, like a fun little accent, which I think it will be. And that gets so close to the edge that it might become necessary, which I think it will, to go ahead and turn the canvas. I'll do a little turn here. So that way I can get all the way to the base. That's all that's needed. All right, then in the middle of the tire, then I can turn the brush to that other direction and then let that fullness of the flat side of the brush really fill into that space. filling in here. Beautiful. There's our tire. <laughs> there it is. Okay, now I want to go ahead and do the little spokes here at the bottom. So this time I use the line edge of the brush. And so I'll just follow them. It's much easier to use this longer line edge to do the spoke because it allows that long line edge to work in your favor and do most of this of that stroke for you. So what I notice happens a lot is sometimes people will pick up, uh -huh, I'll show you here in a second, let me get this angle up here. 
So what I see a lot in class is that people will see a thin line and then they will gravitate towards this brush to make that stroke. And especially with a long line, then they end up getting the shakes all the way down or whatever they're trying to do. And this is actually a really difficult brush to do a long line with, because you just need just a super steady hand, which most people do not have naturally. So it's always a lot easier to let the brush do, oh, nice, oh, I love that. That's so cool. Thank you, that's awesome. That's the perfect way to say hello <laughs> with peace. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so yes. All right, so again, long line really helps and let your line brushes, the longer line brushes, do that work for you. So that really helps out a lot. All right, now, I've got a little handle right here. That's also black. Now I have to go ahead and put little buddy in the bath. He needs a bath. I need a smaller brush for this little handle. It's just too tiny and, and too curvy. All right, so I'm gonna take my little bit brush here. I'm gonna dip into the black paint. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just position this into that little handle here. So that's all the black I'm gonna do for a, a little bit. I've got lots of lights, brights to work into the shape up here. And I always, if I do come back in with some black outline, I always make sure and do that at the very end because I don't want that to interrupt any of the light, bright colors that I'll have working for me. So now what I want to do is, I'm gonna use Little Buddy again. I'm gonna get some base color down for my roses. All right, so I am going to use a little bit of this primary magenta here. Or you can just use like a basic red too. That's also really pretty. And I've got some white nearby and then also some cadmium red, which is like a warm red. But the magenta kind of helps cool it off a little bit since the magenta is a, a cool color. Pink undertones on that one. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this white over here, I've got my cadmium and my magenta. And if you, this is a cool red, so if you wanna use some of that too, you're welcome to do that also. I'm gonna do a little bit of the white, magenta, and the cadmium all together. It almost gives me um, like a hot coral color. It's just very pretty, but the, the cadmium red, those warm undertones pop in and almost give it a hint of coral. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push into these shapes here. Just flat, solid color to begin with. So in the beginning, again, it's that hold it more like a pencil, get around those outside edges. And then when you're filling into the middle, then turn your handle over to the side. So beautiful base. Okay, now it, we need to go ahead and do our detail work over the top. So I come in with just white and my little bit brush here. And I do what looks like a little parentheses. And I do that over the top on the outside edge. And I do it all the way around and I keep kind of rotating it too, around in a circular pattern and working it towards the middle. And then once I've got it towards the middle, then I come back around to the outside and kind of touch in, kind of softly blend in a little bit and get where maybe I didn't go before. All right, so little parentheses, parentheses, kind of rotate it around the surface, still keeping that circular pattern and then work it in towards the center. It's 
So this is that first layer on the rose. Yay. Okay. So that's the first layer. Now we want to come in with the darkest shades. Okay, so a little bit of that magenta now. That's a really dark color, nice accent, also very dark and contrasting. So I'll dip my little bit brush into that. Make sure y'all can see that. Little spot right in the center, kind of feels like you make a little comma. All right, another little comma there. Little comma. Little comma. All right, now we just keep working this in that little circular pattern. And it's the same shape, so it's just kind of really a repeat. Just kind of work that around. And if you get a little too heavy handed with this direction of the darker shade, you can always work back in with more of the white. And, so, and sometimes that's really fun too. You know, you can just, here, let's just do, let's just do a little bit. Because I felt like maybe I got a little too heavy handed there and I lost my white accents. So then I'm going to come right back in with a little bit more white. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, that looks better. And let's do a little bit more over here. All right, so we have beautiful roses now. Very exciting. I'm getting highlights in my hair, too. Oh, well, I'm used to that. <laughs> Always have paint everywhere on me, all the time. All righty, uh, so now it's time for greenery and feathers. Let's do some feathers first. Okay, so let's do some beautiful, like, violet tones. And I will use, let me dig into my paint. Here, y'all can watch with me. I think y'all can see this. Okay, it's right here on top. Okay, so here is some violet. All right, let's see, is this open? Oh, goody, it is. All right, so it's open. Push a little bit of this off to the side. And yeah, it's still a really small area, so I still wanna continue on with my little bit brush. I wanna add a little touch of white into that purple. They call it violet on the bottle, and most uh, paint companies do call it violet, even when it's dark. That's what they call it. All right, so I push a little bit of white into it. That brings up more of that lavender feel. And I'm going to put my paint down. This is a little feather, so I'm going to go ahead and push this into that shape. And then to bring in a nice little accent here, I'll do some white next, just pure white. So I take my little bit brush again, and then we'll do one line right through the middle. Get a soft blend on that. And I do little diagonal strokes down to each side. So that gives it that feathery feel to it. I have one more little feather right up through here. And with that one, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by painting it in white and then I'm gonna do a stripe over the top of it. So a little soft coat of white here. All right, so at first it looks a little scary because it looks like you lost your, your feather, but it's gonna work out. Then I wanna come in with a little bit of some brown. I forgot to get this earlier. I think I can get it come out. Oh, 
Okay, so here's, another, here's a lesson. So it's all sealed at the top because I left the lid open again. <laughs> oh, let me say this. I can get away with that on these really big ones because it keeps so much of the, it will seal off at the top and protect everything underneath the bottom. Oh, yay, yes, they do rock. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, but on these little guys, do not leave the lids off or they'll just dry right up and you'll, you'll lose them and they'll get ruined. But, um, and this is bad, by the way, don't leave your lids off. That's a bad thing to do. However, <laughs> if you do leave it off, and it's big and you can still feel that there's a lot of good wet paint in here, which there is usually always, because I know I work with paints while, either since I was a little girl, I've been doing this leaving the lids off <laughs> so but I just stick like a wood screw in here wood screws are my favorite because they have a, that texture to them and they're metal and so they'll kind of dig around and release all that dried paint and then I've freed up my wet paint now I can squirt up more wet paint and my honey bears up there sneezing can y'all hear them all right okay so I've got my white base on my little feather here, and now I'm going to come into that same shape with a little bit of a, like a brown stripe. So I'm gonna take my little bit brush, dip into the brown. All right, and then let's just go ahead and go all the way across. And you can actually kind of wiggle your hand just a little bit. We don't want super straight, like we want a little bit of an organic quality to this, so they don't have to be perfect stripes at all. And yeah, you know, really just about three is awesome. And then I'm gonna dip back into a little bit of black now, but I'm also going to rotate the head of the brush into that paint so I get a nice fine point. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a nice little thin line right through there. All right, so there's my little, my little feather, my little baby feather. I'm kind of reinforcing these little stripes again. All right. Here's my little feather. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and do cute little leaves. And I wanna come back into my Viridian again, which is that really pretty kind of a teal color and I'll do a little bit of my cadmium green too. So, a little bit brush, maybe a little bit of white. That'd be pretty, let's do all three. All right, I start with the branch first, little tiny branch. And then the little leaves, basically, it feels like you make a little parentheses and then another little parentheses, and you'll, they'll connect and you'll close it off. And then you'll fill it in. And the Viridian's really nice for creating, especially like a darker outline with our leaves. So very pretty. All right, we got more these little cute baby leaves over here. Some of these little leaves have a little bit more of a curve to them. 
And I sometimes feel like that's almost like making like the letter V. So that's another way to think about it, to tell your brain, to make it easier on your brain in case you get a little stuck with the way your hand should flow through the process. Always try to connect with familiar routine motions. Again, the color mix on this, we're going from viridian to cadmium green to a little bit of white, almost equal parts on that too. And I'm just gonna fill into the middle. I'm just kinda add a little texture right in there too. So I picked up a little excess paint right on the ball, like a little ball on the end of the brush, and just kind of lightly tapped in here to give it that texture in the middle of the arrangement. All right, looking very pretty. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and do our straw basket. All right, so I have got a little bit of some white, a little bit of gold, just mix that together, and I'll go ahead and work into this space, just holding the brush more like a pencil with it loaded up on the top, just like a little dot of paint on the top of the brush. Working back into that green just a little bit more just to kind of hit over the top of that again. All right. So this is very beautiful just as it is uh, to make it more of a soft look. And you could certainly outline all of this if you wanted to, but I would I would think really think seriously about using a Sharpie uh, for some of this because this is, man, that's some real tiny little line work. So that can be very tricky with a brush. So that could get very challenging, especially for beginners. Uh, so think about that. It's up to you. But yes, and let's see what we have here. On my paints, I only put uh, so much paint in the lid and I put the lid back on. You are so smart. <laughs> that is a good idea. <laughs> that helps you have self-control and <laughs> makes you clean up after yourself. Good, good deal. Yes. Oh, I just lost my little, look what I just did. Oh, that's so sad. All right. It's back on there. I use a little super glue on that and get those back on. Okay. So now we're to, I can do a little outline here. I think I want to do a little outline. So just a teeny one on the basket. Let's do a little tiny touch of this brown. All right, that nicely accentuates it. And then I think I also want to do some white highlights. All right, so I've got my little bit brush and I dip into a little bit of white. And let's see, turn this here. Just do a little highlight there. Here. Kind of turn this here. It gives me a better angle to re reach into it. Another one here. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Let's see. All right, now we've got lettering to do. And um, you can do Sharpie or paint pen. Makes it a lot easier. It really is a lot easier. So this is what I recommend for beginners. But if you do want to paint, let's go for it. All right, so we've got a little bit brush. I made sure I've got one that's still securely fastened to the brush. That's important. All right, then I'm gonna do a little twist into the paint. So I twist it, load it up. That loads up my brush, but it also twists it into a nice fine point. All right. And then, I, I actually, I'm gonna keep this handy because I have to reload a lot. And then when I come up here, I need a steady hand, so what I'll do is I'll do a little trick where I, I rest uh, the weight of my hand on my pinky on the canvas, and it helps stabilize my hand so that I can do these more precise motions into these smaller spaces. One other thing you can do too, is you can actually start with Sharpie first, and then you can come back over it with just little touches of the paint to give that painterly look, and it obscures that Sharpie underneath too, and that will absolutely, completely keep it your secret that you have a lot of Sharpie underneath as your base. if you're feeling a little uncomfortable with the look of Sharpie. Okay, and another little lesson on loops in your letters. Always make sure you go around the loop don't put your outline inside the loop or else you'll lose your loop and it can, it will completely take away that reference to that particular letter you were going for. So, for example, if I filled inside of that E loop, it wouldn't look like an E anymore. Um, same with the O, so you just have to be careful about that. Make sure you go around the loop with your outline with your black. All right. I have my little black. I'm going to load up and do just a few more tiny little touches just to kind of reference here in the little leaves, like little lines. Real tiny little accents. Oh, that was white. Whoops. Excellent. Poked into white. Which, that doesn't really hurt anything, but I'm back in the middle of that little feather again. And I want some little feathering strokes here. Little diagonal. So just tiny little subtle sketches of lines. All right, very nice. This is so exciting, we are done. Except for the signature. By the way, signature on this could be a little tricky. And I don't know, I, I usually wait until after I'm done with the class to sign mine. I like to photograph it just as is without my signature on there. Uh, but if you're signing this, you can see how we've got some visual tension happening here with composition and you're right next to the edge on both sides. So there's interesting ways in which you can sign your piece. I've seen a lot of people, it's really fun. They'll do like a tiny little thing up the side. That's very fun to do. Or maybe up this side here. Or you could sign over the top, but I'd make it really tiny with like a, a gold Sharpie maybe or silver Sharpie. That would also work. Um, or people, you could just do it on the back or the side or something like that too if you don't necessarily want it showing at all. But yeah, either way. But yes, it's exciting. Except right there. I'm noticing I don't like that. 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> I was like, I said to myself earlier, I didn't trace anything there, and I was, I did not like that empty being empty. Where's my, where's that brush? Oh, here it is. Hold on, I have to do one more leaf in here. Have to. Um, I need more Viridian. Psych, not done. <laughs> All right, more Viridian. Okay, a uh, little bit brush again. And we're gonna put in a few more little leaves. Yeah, it was a little bit bare right now. There. Now I'm I'm happy, I think. Yes. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good. Okay. We are done. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> we really are done. <laughs> so I don't think I'm gonna psych you out again. All right. So that's been beautiful, and it has been such a pleasure painting with y'all today, and I for sure will see y'all soon. I'm doing so many paintings right now. Um, if I do not have one scheduled tomorrow, then I will definitely see you Thursday at 1230. I think that's my good time during the week. Oh, I'm not, I'm so, I'm not going to see you tomorrow. I know I'm not. What, what is today? Oh, today's Monday. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, hold up. I got this. Okay, so I am painting with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. So, um, yes, tomorrow, 1230. And I have no idea what I'm painting as usual. <laughs> By the time I'm done, it's like, it, here's what's nice about painting. It relaxes you so much that it just wipes your, your brain clean. <laughs> but sometimes it's all memory and so, and function, which is sometimes a very good thing. But I can't remember what I'm painting. I never can at the end of my uh, shows unless I have it sitting right there. But I, alas, I do not. So yes, but I know that I am painting tomorrow, Tuesday at 1230. For sure, it's Wednesday that I, I can't. I've got something else going on, but yes. But yes, this is exciting. So Tuesday, y'all join me again tomorrow at 1230. And y'all have a beautiful rest of the day, and we'll see you soon.